call this economic development uh, committee meeting to order, please. And I'm going to ask Carol to come forward. I think you all have a copy of the December report, I believe. Good morning. Good morning. Any questions? Any questions for Carol? I have one question, Carol. I, 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 I want to ask you a question on the Empire Zone. I noticed that, I, I think that a lot of us aren't aware of this, but the Empire Zone program is gearing down. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes. So there is no Empire Zone anymore. Well, well it exists. But there are new, no new. That is correct. Businesses. So for the for the qualified businesses, which again, the businesses qualify annually via their tax returns. So for those qualified businesses that are still approved and meeting the compliance um, until um, the termination, which the, you know there's like a five-year termination, a ten-year termination for just different incentives until that terms out. As long as annually they keep um, meeting the requirements. Mm -hmm until it turns out, um, and you're right, there has been no new uh, applicants uh, for, oh my gosh, a long time. But we're still required as a county to maintain um, all the reporting, and our office does the main, main we, we do all the reporting on behalf of the county for those businesses in the county that still qualify. Okay, how many are there now? How many existing Empire Zone businesses are there? Well, if it's not on here, I'll have to get back to it because Jody does that program and Jody's at a meeting today. Are they so. all in Mariah? No, we got one. <laughs> no. no. Yes. If you, I don't know if you remember, um, at one point in time, yes, it did start in the town of Mariah and was, Tom was a part of that. That was the only, that was the economic development zone. The entire economic oh. development of the county was Mariah. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Uh, but the program uh, kind of ebbed and flowed and changed, and so at one point we were able to do um, some non-contiguous tax parcel um, qualifications around the county. So it's kind of like a polka dot. Um, I, we do have a list at the office of those businesses. When will they all be gone? When, when will the input? I don't know off the top of my head, but we can certainly answer that question no, for you. I can, you know, if you want to call the office or uh, so send an email. A, you know, it was a curiosity question, just for. All There's still people. more than you think there are. There are still quite a few that are qualifying annually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if the number's 50 or 100, but I would guess somewhere in that in that range. Yeah, yes, I think most of those benefits had time frames on them too, yes. correct? Like the wage tax Which credit, the years. sales tax were correct. Yeah. So I, I, I think a lot of those have gone by the wayside. Right. Um, so not so the businesses that are still in the loop aren't getting all of the incentives correct. anymore yeah. because most of them have turned out. Yeah. Now is this that all Empire State zones are being eliminated? That is all correct. Yes. That is correct. Is there a replacement program? Not really. I mean some would say that you know the new startup New York program the governor's put out for the community colleges and partners with uh, new businesses in the state in some ways there's equal if not better incentives um, it's just structured a little differently so there is no Empire Zone or replacement but there are other programs that kind of cover some of the same incentives that for businesses who qualify them for them in the state okay thank you any other questions yes so um, on the uh, Wilsboro Commerce, Commerce Park, so the, the contract with Wilsboro Development Corporation ends in October. So what, is, what happens to the property? Um, that's been discussed at the IDA board meeting. I don't know if, Jerry, you want to respond or? <coughs> Not really. Okay. Um, I, 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 <laughs> no. You're in trouble, Sam. I don't know if there's necessarily a plan, but I do believe we'll be reaching out, you know, just to probably set up a meeting. Um, we have a, actually a board member from the IDA from the town of Willsboro, so it will probably be uh, most likely between that board member, um, yourself, um, you know, to find out what, you know, what next steps the community is interested in taking or not. So it's probably sometime in the spring I would suspect we'll work with you on this, you know, on what works best for you. 
I, I guess I've got a board meeting with the WDC on Thursday, so I'm probably going to need to talk to you guys after that. I haven't spoken to that board meeting from our community for, for two years, so okay. um, I think we can take it to a faster level. Thanks. Sounds good. Yes, sir. I just didn't want to comment because I don't want to say something that I don't remember right. <laughs> but That's very diplomatic. Yeah. Uh, I just want to thank, take this opportunity to thank Jody and Carol. I had mentioned at the last meeting we were going around to different towns in Essex County. We've been to quite a few where the IDA has helped out the business. And we did our last one this past month in Ticonderoga at the Best Western Hotel. And it's been very enlightening to go to these places and see what their business is. Instead of just sitting at a board meeting and moving resolutions to help them out, to go see what business they have. It's been very, very uh, enlightening for myself and the board members. And now this month we start in December back in E-Town again. But I think this is something we need to keep up in the future. When we have a new uh, business that wants help from the ID, we should go see it too. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Any other questions for Carol? Thank you. Thank you. Happy Very holidays. Good. Thank you. Mike Mascarinas, come on down. You can have the uh, CFA award money, or you can have everything behind the door behind me. Which, I'll take the money. You'll take the money. Yeah. Are we going to hog that? Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not no, leaving. Don't do that. I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have one referral this morning. Uh, the referral was from the town of Westport for Robert McGee for a special permit. It's unclear in the plans and specs that we got if any modifications are going to be made to the existing driveway, which connects to our county road. Uh, because of this, we're requesting that the applicant apply for a county highway right-of-way work permit. So okay. that would be the comment, Dina. All right. Is that normally done before or after the resolution? Uh, the, the resolution would be that that is the comment made by the board that they need to. Right. Yeah. So I need a, need a motion to move that resolution. Jerry, seconded by Mike Marnell. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you. Uh, the only other thing I want to talk about today is the CFA awards. Um, we I, had. I do want to congratulate you, really, because yeah. uh, you. You did a, uh, a great job and received a substantial amount of money on behalf of the county. Thanks. Um, the list that you see in front of you, I, I hope, isn't the awarded list. It was the list we applied for. The awards came out okay. after my report was submitted to the board. I wish we had gotten all those, okay. but it does show a certain amount of oh, work. Do you know which ones we I do. Okay. I do now know that. Right. Um, we. We did get the award in Crown Point for $600,000, which I was glad about. Um, Port Henry also, $600,000. We were able to get a couple of the engineering planning grants that we applied for, which will set us up for uh, future problems to be settled throughout the county and make us eligible for POTS going forward. And we were able to get the nutrition building funded at 400000 which was kind of uh, an overarching goal that, that we had in my office and, and as a county. So I, I am really happy about that. Generally, we have about a 50% response rate as a project. This year, we were a little short of that, but we'll uh, keep working toward doing better next year. We got 1.6 million overall. Okay, out of the three? Out of the 3.6 that was applied for, correct. Right. Um, but we can move forward with the nutrition building project, which, which is a good thing. All right. Yes, Charlie. I want to um, publicly thank um, Mike and his support staff for assisting us in receiving that uh, $600,000. Uh, that is for our water improvement uh, project. Uh, we've been working on this for a year and a half, and uh, without that $600,000 award, our user fees would be almost cost prohibitive. So I certainly want to um, give my appreciation to community resources and also to the Industrial Development Agency who also participated in assisting us in qualifying. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yes. 
Sure. Of the four engineering planning grants, did you get them all, or which ones? I didn't get them all. Which uh, ones? And unfortunately, yours I did not. You did, get, Jerry. So yeah, you, you can you can beat me up outside later. It won't be you. I'll be beaten up. <laughs> EFC. <laughs> yes. Uh, we we were able to get Marias and um, uh, Willsboro. Mark. Yes, sir. Has there I know in the beginning there was discussion about how this whole program works. Um, I mean, to me, to have to put in for infrastructure needs into this whole pot of projects is insane. Um, you know, where you see other areas getting these huge awards, and we've got infrastructure that's fallen to pieces. The way it used to be in the old days, you you've submitted your grant application based on its own merit. You weren't in competition against, you know, the whole damn state. Uh, I just think it's very unfair. It's 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 a horrible way to do things, and um, and I got some real issues with it. It's yeah, if you want my opinion, there are some programs probably included in the process that should absolutely not be included in there. Um, HUD being one of them. Exactly. Um, That's uh, CDBG grant awards were never meant to create jobs. Uh, they and and they're kind of being built up like they're supposed to. Um, they're, they're meant to... Or EFC. Right. And, and EFC is not in there under their normal drinking water, um, clean water program. They are there for their planning purposes. But, but you're right in that regard, Tom. Um, I mean, when you have Department of Health coming in and, 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 and mandating improvements that you have to make to your water system, DEC coming in mandating improvements that you've got to make to your sewer systems, your wastewater systems, and the only place you can go to find any money to make this affordable for your constituents is in this huge program that's based on jobs. I'm not trying to base it on jobs. I'm trying to stop raw sewage from running down the side of the road. Oh I mean, yeah, and it's ridiculous. To, and you're trying to make it affordable for the people that live there. That's the whole exactly. purpose of HUD is is to reduce the burden of, of the people receiving the benefit. The whole process is like Santa Claus bringing this big bag of goodies in, and you know what? You might get a gift, you might not. So. Okay, I've said my piece. No, we, I think a lot of us agree. You know, I mean, just, just watching yeah. the online. I mean, I, I know Bill and Randy and others were there, but when we looked at it, I mean, I thought I was on the Price is Right or... <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I mean, uh, very good. Really, yeah. I, it did. I mean, I, did, you, did you happen to notice the chair with Mr. Scazafava's name on it that no one was in it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was empty. So you could have voiced these opinions there. I think he was, as it turns out, he was the smart one. <laughs> yes, sir. What bothers me with this big pot of money and EFC, who helps out, knew that we inherited a problem from the village of Keysville. $190,000 a year debt with a water plant that's in the wicked violations from EPA, DEC, and DOH. And I call them and plead with them that we're spending money left over right to try to bring this water plant into... Uh, the way it's supposed to be, you know, in compliance. <clears throat> so we just need this $24,000, which we're going to put 25% of it up, to help out because we got over a million dollars worth of repairs in this water plant, and I don't even have the money to pay the debt service, and I had to borrow $50,000 from the general fund to pay the EFC's debt. I may not want to borrow that money next year because that debt is Village of Keysville, not Town of Chesterfield, and I'll let them know about that. It really bothers me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, plus... All these capital projects, well, even with the grants, kind of gets your tax cut. Yeah. The interest you pay. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of silly. It's so strange. It's so, yeah, very silly. Uh, youth Bureau? The Youth Bureau, I have nothing to report on. Okay. Any other questions for Mike? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, no report on fisheries. Uh, Rural McCaffrey left you a copy, I believe, of the her December 2015 um, historical report. Anita Deming is here, I believe. Come on down, Anita. Hello. Um, let's see. 
Lord, I think I didn't put the new classes coming up on the list, and I apologize for that. Um, just forgot. <laughs> so um, you do have a, an, a, the, what we did last month, and I would like to add that on Friday last week we hired Linda Galillan to be our issue leader. Uh, Mary Mary Brayette went to Clinton County to be the executive director up there, so we had that open position. As a part of that, we have ended the position that Linda was in, and so we have, uh, uh, you know, we don't have two people in 4-H anymore at this point. Um, I shouldn't say that. We have uh, Samantha Davis that uh, does the record-keeping part and stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to let you know was we received funding for, um, <coughs> is it Annie's project? Let me, let me get my glasses on. <laughs> yes, which is a program that's going to be done on farm transition. So it's how to sell your farm to another farmer or to transition into retirement or to move it to your next generation. Um, it's a five-week class, three, uh, four hours a week. And um, it's pretty in-depth, and you should come up with an estate plan, a retirement plan, and a transfer plan out of that. So those are the, that's the big class that's coming up in, Jan in January that's being run here in Essex County. Okay. Any questions for Anita? Thank you, Anita. You're welcome. I'm happy to have you. Yes, you too. I'm not going to Jim. Well, the weather outside is frightful, and it really is. Uh, you know, this, the holiday week that's coming up is traditionally one of the busiest traveler weekends for us countywide, and certainly the weather patterns over the next two weeks are continuing along the same, the same line. However, what we've done is we've got a group together last Friday, which include ORDA, our office, uh, some of the larger uh, hotels that do marketing, and even add workshop. And what we're going to come up with today is really a list of sort of all weather holiday activities that we're going to do. And we're going to look around the county as well so that, you know, people are still, people have booked, but what happens is they have seven-day cancellations in a lot of cases. So, you know, there's going to be a time period there where people are going to make the final decision whether they want to come up or not. What we're going to try to do is put in place enough activities, family fun related, so that they will show that there's a wide variety of things to do, from guided hikes to, you know, indoor and outdoor activities. So we're going to try to really deal with what we have, but do it in a way that, why would you not want to come, <laughs> type of thing, is that we've got all these activities going. So that's what we're concentrating on this week, and we'll do a little marketing campaign on that. More importantly, we'll get it to all of the hotels and motels so that they have something to tell their potential guests. Um, and we'll, we'll push that quite hard uh, over the next two weeks, or the next week and a half, actually. A um, couple of things I'd like to talk about. I'm actually working with the... Um, Ticonderoga supervisor, and we've been putting together a package to be considered, so we're, we're working on the semifinals for the Bass Federation's competition next October, so we're trying to work that out right now, and utilize what we're trying to really figure out is what marketing they will do for us, because there is a commitment, cash commitment for it, but it would include, we're looking at it as all of Lake Champlain is how we're going to do it. We think that that is going to be probably a good thing to get on, and it'll be at a time of year where we'll be able to get some fall you know, marketing and media attention out of it. So we're working on that. Which supervisor? Uh, well, the one that's currently supervisor. The next year? He's the one that's currently the supervisor. He's the one that actually put the contacts together. But I want to comment a little bit more on the good work that Mike did because, you know, um, it said 85 million our region got the North Country region, but when you take out the federal exempt bonds, which was 45 million, and you also take out the job uh, job program tax credits, it ends up being 33 and a half million dollars in actual grants funding. And you look at that, and you know there's seven counties, so we we should get at hopefully at least 14 percent. Well, we ended up with direct uh, direct grants of uh, six million seven hundred twenty-two thousand eight hundred. 
That's closer to 20%, Mike. So really, way to go. And in addition to that, there was another, a lot of other grants out there that it was multi-county. That, you know, the Essex was included, and that was another $4 million. So I think from that point of view, um, I think that overall the county fared well. Overall, certainly there's, it'd be nice to uh, be the big winner, but we have to recognize that population bases around the state in some cases are greater than ours, and, you know, that could have certainly played into that type of, um, type of thing. So, we shouldn't be sad, we, I guess we would be happy overall. Another thing I want to, want to point out real quickly is that I read, I, I don't know, I read a article, I'm not sure who said it, that, you know, even when occupancy tax is up, there's nothing back to the county budget. I, I don't know who said that. You know, Tom? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who wrote that. You don't know who wrote that, Laura? But anyway, here's how it has a direct impact on the county budget. So we're looking at maybe about a 4% increase in occupancy tax this year, right in that area. We won't know really until February what the finals are. But that represents about $80,000. And we know from nationally about one-third of, of a traveler's expenditure is for lodging. Some research that we've done here shows that literally for each occupancy tax dollar generated, generates $3.72, $3.72 in sales tax dollars. So looking at that range from a third to 3.72, you can say easily a 4% increase in occupancy tax this year could be $80,000. That transfers into 200, between, somewhere between 240 and 297,000 in direct sales tax dollars. Yes, Tom. I, I, think, I, I think I did say that, and I, I love your common core math, but the bottom line is, when the occupancy tax revenues increase, what I meant was, we don't see it into our county coffers directly. Yep. I, I, I Correct? I said, yeah. Well, that's the point that I was making. Well, I know, I know. Now the you point, can extrapolate that out into sales tax well, and you so know, on and so it, forth. It's easy to extrapolate because lodging represents 30% of the of the traveler's spend. So if you look at that and then you look at the overall occupancy tax, you can definitely correlate that back. Which is up. Yeah. So the sales tax is down. Well, sales tax, we don't use sales tax as an indicator. If, if occupancy tax wasn't up, sales tax would be further down. Okay, so if there's other, there's much, much other larger influences on sales tax. You just, than said, you just said sales tax, that it directly impacts sales yeah, tax. Yeah, I'm just saying, uh, what I'm just saying is that that grows sales, if occupancy tax raises, it's usually one third of the raise in sales tax related to traveler's expenditures. Right. I'm, not looking, I'm not looking to debate with you. I know, but, neither am I, but if that's my quote, what, it, what I meant by it was I'm that, sure that sure. revenue does not impact I know the county budget. At all. Well, it does. It does, because increased... I'm saying tax. direct dollars back. If our occupancy tax goes up 20%, we don't add that additional revenue into the county budget. No. 5% five for the yeah. administration. That's yeah. right. 5% plus the, right. plus the $80,000 towards the fish hatchery, plus yep. Yep. money to the town. What I'm saying, there's some. All I'm Probably. saying, Tom, is well, no, if occupancy no. tax is up, sales tax from this from coming year, years, we will see it's three times higher than that. All right. Let's back to the on. town. I just thought I'd make that point. Why did you well, start that? I don't know. It's just because I thought I would. All right. That's it, I'm done. I'm ready to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Mr. McKenna, other than Skaza Pava? <laughs> no? Thank you. Right. Any other resolutions to come before this committee? Yes, Mike. Uh, not a resolution, but just uh, take it to the fisheries. Yeah. Since uh, Lemire is retiring, and, and the uh, person who's worked there for years, I understand this is going to be running the show. And, and it, should we have to have somebody do a, uh, an inspection every quarter just to see, to make sure that that is what I mean, Steve was a professional? Uh, yeah, well, I think that's going to occur. Uh, Chris Carroll and Jim Dugan are going to be, um, the, the department itself is moving into DPW, so yeah. Chris Carroll and Jim Dugan will oversee that operation. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, but I think it's in terms of the board visiting on a quarterly basis, somebody from the board, that makes sense. I mean, I, yeah, well, I, think. I think so. I mean, I don't think Chris Carroll knows too much about that line, so I, yeah. I, I'd like to maybe think of an independent, so the, the program runs as good as it has been. Not yeah. say I don't know the man's taking over, and I'm sure he will. I know he's 
he was uh yeah he's been doing a good job but just just so we're for a year anyway that we're yeah uh, functional like we should right Mr. Soil and water are um, aware of persons who have expertise in the fishery industry. And if we do get into trouble, uh, we certainly will be able to utilize them as a resource. Okay. They do a, they do a report. We don't want to go until we get in trouble. We want them. Right. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, your point well taken. I think it's a debate for another day. Yeah. Um, we can do that. Point well taken. Yes, Charlotte. Uh, the gentleman who is running the fish hatchery is essentially married to that position. And uh, he gives it 100% every single day. He is there on days when it's his day off just to make sure that things are occurring as he had planned. Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. Yeah. Anyone else? Any other comments on that issue? If not, we're